In the last video we looked at orbitals and we saw how the overall structure of these orbitals were arranged like this. We had these discrete energy levels, so we had the first energy level, the second energy level, and then the third one and the fourth one, which is up here. And each of those energy levels was divided into a sub into a set of sub energy levels. So we have the S, the P, and the D, and then the F, which comes into play later on. But we also learnt the key thing about how we fill these. We learnt that electrons like to fill them in increasing energy. So you'll never get electrons filling the 3d orbital before the 2p orbital. It just doesn't work like that. So if we wrote down the electron configuration of the element where we filled electrons up to here. So that would be 18 electrons and that's argon. So argon, its atomic number is 18 and we can write its electronic configuration. So we have 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, and 3p6. So what if we wrote down the electron configuration of element 19? So we need to do that. So element 19 is potassium. So potassium, atomic number 19, it would be the structure of argon, so this 1s1 to 3p6 structure here. But logically, following this pattern, you'd expect the 4d orbital to be here. No, the 4s orbital, sorry. So you'd expect this to be the 4s orbital. And that would mean that you'd have this. Because the electrons fill in increasing energy, they would fill the 3d before the 4s. So you'd expect it to be this, not 3d10, 3d1. So you'd expect it to be that. But in reality, the 4s orbital isn't arranged like that. It's actually down here. So it's still at a higher energy level than the 3p orbital, but it's lower in energy than the 3d orbital, which means it's not 3d1, but it's 4s1, because the electrons fill them in increasing energy order. So whilst the rest of the 4s, no, of the four sublevels are arranged like that where they keep on increasing, that's going to be the 4p, while the entirety of the 4s energy level is higher in overall energy than the 3 energy level, the 4s orbital is lower than the 4d orbital, which means that it gets filled first. So now that we know this, we can write the electronic configurations of elements 19 and 20, so potassium and calcium. So let's write those down here. So we have potassium, potassium, and that is going to be argon, 4s, one and calcium which is this. So now the next highest sublevel, if we look back on the graph, is going to be the 3D. So elements 21 to 30, so uh, scandium to zinc, are going to gradually fill the 3D orbital. So we can write down um, Let's, let's just write down the electronic configurations in shorthand. So we have scandium, and its shortened electronic configuration is AR 3D 1 4S 2. We always write the 4S after the 3D because it is uh, the 4 orbital, the, the 4 energy level is overall higher. So that's why we write it there, even though it's lower in energy. So we have scandium, titanium is AR 3D2 4S2 and vanadium which is AR 3D3 4S2. Now when it comes to the next element chromium you'd expect to have this where we have uh, chromium AR 3D4 4S2 
2. You'd expect that because we've we've added another electron to the 3D orbital. But something kind of awesome happens here. But let's just use an analogy to describe what's happening. At the moment, we have two orbitals. Let's draw them as people. We have orbital 3D. He's a big one. And he's unhappy because he is carrying two shopping bags that are uneven in weight. He has three items in this one and two on this one. Which means that he is leaning over this way, which is bad for his back. So this is a 3D orbital. So he's unhappy. And we also have the 4S orbital. He's unhappy because he's carrying two electrons. Well, two items. So these are too heavy for him because he's only little. So he's not happy either. So a good way for us to solve this problem is to take one item out of the 4S bag and put it into this 3D bag. And that will mean that we now have happy orbitals. We have somebody who isn't lopsided. So, what was I drawing there? So, he's happy now, and the 4S is no longer weighed down by those two orbitals, so he can carry them just fine. So he's happy. And really what's happening here is that we're putting in a little bit of energy to take the item from the 4S to the 4D orbital, thus balancing them out and making them more stable. And that is a better way of doing it than just not putting in that energy in the first place. And this just carries over to the electrons. We need to put in a little bit of energy to bump that electron up from its 4s to its 3d, but once it's there, it is a more stable configuration. It is, it, it is just better for it to be that way, that's why that happens. So instead of this configuration, we actually have this configuration. A little bit of lag on my pen there. So we have 3d5, 4s, 1. So both of these being half filled is better than it being this lopsided configuration we see here. So after that, we end up st sticking another electron into the 4s to fill it up again. So that's manganese, so we can write them out here. So it's going to be 3d5, 4s, 2. And then with the next one, iron, we keep on adding them into the 3D again. So it kind of resumes back to the normal thing that we would expect it to be. And then the last one is nickel. But then when we get to the next element, copper, something weird happens again. As we saw in the last example with the chromium, it becomes unstable when one of them is half is not filled and the other one is completely full. It's better for them to be in a different state. And that's what happens with copper. We would expect copper to look like this. With the nine electrons in the 3D orbital and two in the 4, 4S orbital. But as with the other case with the chromium, it is more stable for an electron to be promoted from the 4s to the 3d, thus giving copper this configuration, because this is more stable. So then the 4s orbital is filled again for zinc, and then from gallium to uh, krypton, I think it is, the 4p sublevel gets filled up in the normal way, much like the uh, 3p sublevel and the 2p sublevel. So that is th the main trouble that people have when it comes to these energy levels. This little exception with copper and chromium. So that usually does come up in exams and stuff. You do need to know that. But that's just a little interesting thing. So just to round off this video, I'm just going to give you a little resource that helps you think about the periodic table in terms of its blocks. 
I've already prepared one earlier in a very Blue Peter fashion. And this just shows where the electrons are in the periodic table. So we have the S block from uh, hydrogen, helium, all the way down to radium, and then the P block, the P block over here, and then the D block in the middle, and the F block at the bottom. So that's just where the blocks are on the periodic table, and those just correspond to where the sublevels are filling. So that's it for this video. In the next one, we are going to briefly cover the electron configuration of ions. Those aren't hard and well except for one little thing but it shouldn't be that difficult and then we'll go on to talk about the evidence for all this stuff that's really interesting so i will see you then